Okay, I'm going to ask another really good friend of the Palestinian people, Alexi, to come and speak now. Alexi from the Green Party and has done more, I think, than almost any other councillor in Sheffield City Councillor to speak up and continue to speak for the Palestinian people. Coming today, uh, today, as we have heard, we are commemorating Al Nakba during which approximately 780,000 Palestinians were ethnically cleansed and 15,000 killed. What the Israelis have done in Gaza in the last seven months dwarfs that in terms of human suffering. Two million people displaced, around 40,000 people killed, including 15,000 children. Now I'm old enough to remember when everyone throughout society, from the government, to the media, to all our institutions, was committed to preventing another genocide. We were told that never again could it be allowed to happen, and that it was everyone's responsibility to prevent genocide, the gravest crime which can be committed. It was what we were all taught at school. That was less than eight months ago. Since then, we have seen the annihilation of Gaza. At least 10 mass graves have been found. Water, food, electricity, fuel have all been cut off. Hospitals ran out of fuel on Monday. Most hospitals are completely destroyed. Every university in Gaza has been destroyed. Over 60% of housing has been destroyed. We've seen patients in mass graves with their catheters still attached, doctors kidnapped and tortured to death, amputations of prisoners from handcuff injuries, children sexually assaulted in Israeli prisons. 188 UN workers have been killed, deliberately targeted and executed, including British nationals, without any consequences. Nearly 9,000 Palestinians have been detained in the West Bank and 490 people, 498 people killed in the West Bank where there is no Hamas. The US, not just arming Israel, but they are providing funding and diplomatic pressure. The book stops with the US. This is the US's genocide. President Biden and his administration are not complicit but wholly responsible for this genocide, for every single crime committed. He is sacrificing not only his president, presidency, but the last pretense of US democracy on the altar of supporting genocide. The UK too has destroyed what was left of its international reputation the facade of a country which respects international law, despite things like the Iraq war, despite the Hiranda bill. Like Biden and the US, the UK's reputation will never recover. We want this to stop. We demand an end to racism. We demand an end to apartheid. We demand an end to genocide. And we also demand an end to our council and institutions of Sheffield complicity. So far, the council has hidden behind Kafkaesque rules and procedures to prevent a statement of solidarity with Palestinians. Shame on them! But Sheffield can take a stand. We can declare our city an Israeli apartheid free zone, even if symbolically at this stage. We can recognize the apartheid and we can condemn it. We can recognize genocide and condemn it. To say otherwise is an insult to the intelligence of the people of Sheffield and an injurious crime to anyone who believes in the sanctity of human life and the idea that crimes against humanity should be prevented and the perpetrators prosecuted. Thank you. Thanks so much, Alexi. I think Alexi is a living example of the fact that politicians can choose to 
tell the truth. Politicians can choose to be brave. They just have to do it.